Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, welcome all the newcomers, thank you to my subscribers and to the people visiting my channel. I hope you enjoy what you see and if you do please subscribe, share, like, comment, it helps us grow the channel. To my subscribers and to the people in the groups that I'm in, I thank you so much for your kindness, for your kind words and for your support on all the patterns that I do. Um, there was a, a viewer that saw this beautiful um, rounded table runner that I have not named it yet, but I think I'm going to name it Maria after my mom. So um, I think that's what I'll do. And um, I created and designed this pattern. And I had a lot of feedback on it, which was wonderful. So I thank every single one of you for your beautiful uh, comments and support. I am going to uh, do this um, in, uh, it's, it's a very bright uh, pink, uh, like almost fuchsia, you know. And uh, here's the mixed with some uh, purple and some lighter uh, shades of pink and so very nice color. I use my thread number four. This is Portuguese brand, made in Portugal. I am in Europe, so this is uh, called Ladybug, uh, size uh, thread four, and then of course the color numbers. These rolls, they come 100 grams. I'm also gonna use this purple uh, to match up some of the lighter purple that I have here on the mixed one. And I have this uh, mixed green and the very lime bright shiny green. So I am gonna go with the flow and play with the colors and see what I come up with. And if there's something I don't like, that it's not matching well enough for me, then I will change into another um, another type of pinkish or purple. And I usually go with the flow. This is usually how I set my, my brains to it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Many of you have asked me for the tutorial. I have already sent the messages out on the groups that I am recording the tutorial now. I hope you enjoy it. It's a very easy one. You just have to pay attention like every other pattern that you do. Thank you so much again, everybody. And uh, let me know how it went for the ones that are creating uh, the Maria rounded uh, table runner. I also wanted to mention to you that this round table runner you can easily make a tablecloth you can go bigger all you have to do is keep adding here on the white you could even put further up these uh this design right here and then go back into the white so it can you can extend it to the size you want and then you can add these little uh flowers at the end of your uh, tablecloth so um, very simple. A lot of you sometimes are looking for patterns for tablecloth. Well, here it is. I don't make them. I've done many tablecloths and bed, uh, bed spreads, and I've really, really gotten tired of it. So I don't do that anymore. I basically do only table runners and sometimes bedroom uh, kids uh, uh, sets for bedroom boys or girls. And uh, which we'll get into that eventually and um, and take it from there. So thank you again, everybody. And let's get started. OK, thank you. Don't forget to share, please. So we are going to start by the magic ring. So you turn once. I'll just get you a little bit closer because sometimes it's a little bit difficult to look. And we're inside of this magic ring. We are going to do 16 stitches. So I'm going to try to keep as um, small videos as I can because I believe this is probably going to take two, if not three videos because it's, you know, it's a lot of little details. So not hard to make, but it's because of showing the de the details for the people that are just starting crochet and, and starting to get into new patterns, things like that, okay? So I'll try to keep it short as I can. Now, we're going to make three, uh, three, 16 uh, stitches. So we're doing the, we're doing this middle part here, okay? And then we're going to go up one and two separations, skip one, and then another one. Anyway. So do your 16, lock it up on the third place here, May, go up three, and we'll take it from there. I'll meet you on the next row. 
So we've locked in on the third one. We went up three. We're going to do two more. So it's going to be a total of five. We're going to turn one. So we're going to skip the first one here. Okay. And we're going to go into the next one. And we're going to do a stitch. And then two separation. Skip the one here and to the next one. We're going to do this eight times around. Okay. I'll meet you on the next row up. So lock it in, go up the next row. So we went up three. Don't worry about if it's starting to make like a little uh, hat or something. Once you put the next row, it's going to straighten it out. You got to make sure that you don't tighten your stitch too much. Like in my case, I tighten too much and that's not good for certain patterns like in this case. So I'm going to, uh, mine's probably a little bit too uh, tightened up. And if it is, and it's still looping a bit, I'm going to take it down and enlarge in my, my stitch more. For some of you that have a very tight stitch, instead of doing two separation, do three. And for others of you that your stitch is too loose, well, then um, keep it um, a two or a one if it's extremely loose. Okay. So we went up three. Now, inside, we're going to go inside of each little square, or each little box here. Inside of here, without counting this one, we're not counting it, we're going to do five uh, stitches, okay? Regular stitch, five times, and then one on top of the single stitch uh, here. So, one, two, three, four, five. So, without counting here, we have five. And then we go to the next one, right overlap it, we do one. And again, we're going to count five. So we're going to do this row this way. Five inside, one overlapping the single one underneath. And I'll meet you at the end. So it's going to be like that. Okay. Go around, third one, lock it in, go up. So we finished making our... See, like I told you, once you you um, do your round, then everything comes together. It's not a hat anymore. If it was too much for me, I would have taken it down and redid it a little bit more loose. Okay, go up three. Once you go up three, you're going to do two more. So it's a total of five. I'm going to skip one. We go into the next one. So we're going to skip, you know what, in order not to be mistaken with some people uh, just going to the next one and do this because now you're going to be right in the middle instead of on top it's easier that way not to get confused so uh one two three four and five so do your five stitch skip one go to the next one we're going to do this all the way around Nothing to it, piece of cake. I'm going to make uh, our stitch, two separation, skip one, next one. Two separation, skip one, next one. I'll meet you at the end on the next row. Okay, so we've done our stitches. You're supposed to have 24 single stitch. So make sure you have 24 of them. And now... We go in the middle here, and we go up, and we're going to make two groups of three with two separation. So one, two, and another group of three. Like that. I'm going to do this throughout the whole row. No separation, skip one square, going to the next one. Again, the two groups of three with two separation. One, two, and again. We're going to, no separation here. We're going to skip a square and go to the next one. We're going to do this repeatedly throughout the row. I'll meet you at the end on the next um, row, which is, this is the row we're doing now. I'm cutting my thread and I'm changing into the white. 
So if you want to continue doing the same color, you don't cut yours. If not, we're going to cut the thread and change color. I'll meet you at the end. So I've cut my yarn and I pretty much go through the loops and hide it. And the magic one also go through in the middle of the loops. I use a smaller needle so I can get through because my stitch is very tight. And this way you're guaranteed that none of your pieces are going to come apart either when you wash it or you give it to somebody. You want to make sure or you're selling it. You want to make sure your job is done perfectly and everything is safe now and it also gives it the perfect finish so there is no uh you can't see where you started and you can't see where you finished it so this is what it's going to look like now i'm changing the yarn and we're going to go into the white okay so you wrap any of the loops here on any one of them it doesn't make a difference I have to work with two number uh, two number sixes of my white because they don't have number four. It still has not arrived in the island. So I'm stuck uh, using two threads at the same time, which is no biggie, but sometimes it can be a pain because you go through one and you don't um, you miss out another one. You have to always go back and, and redo it. Okay, so we're doing again the two groups of threes, as you can see with two separation so just doing the two groups exactly as we did here same same thing the only difference is we're doing one separation and we're going into the next one so very simple two groups of three with two separation and uh, and one separation between groups so nothing to it a very simple um, pattern not complicated you just have to be uh, careful on your stitches so one separation here and continue yours this is repeatedly around this row and I'll meet you at the end on the next row so now we're going into the middle we walk through we locked in we walk through we're going to the middle we're going to do, we are on here. So now we're doing the same thing. Two groups again with two separation. The only difference is going to be two. Lock it in and two. And then the two groups again. Okay, so one, two, three. Again, the two groups. One, two separation. And again, a group of three. Like that one two separation and we are gonna lock it in here like that in the middle one two separation and go into the next middle like that and then do the groups again so nothing to it no biggie one two separation Another group of three, two separation here again. My God, it's a disaster when you work with two, two threads. One, two. One, two. So simple. This row is repeatedly the same thing. Do yours, I'll do mine. I'll meet you in the next row. So we've gotten to the end. We've locked up. We're going to walk here through the middle and we're going to the middle here. One, two, and three. And do the same groups again. So we'll be repeatedly the same thing on this row. The only difference is between the one, two separation. The only difference is between the two, um, the two stands. Instead of being two, it's three separation. So very simple, we're going to repeat the same row, except for the uh, one, two, and three. That's it, and nothing to it. Go in the middle here. 
lock it in. One, two, and three. That's it. And it's repeatedly. Do yours. I'll do mine. And I will meet you at the end. So we have one, two, three. One, two, three. If you're changing yarns, well, actually, no, because I'm doing the little white around it. That's right. I'm going to do the white around it. If you don't want this white around it and or you're just using the same color, well, then continue. If you don't want the white, then you cut your yarn after you're done. And you can just go into whatever color you're using over here. Okay. Okay, so now I went in the middle. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to do 18 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't loosen it too much. Tighten as much as you can. Seven, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18. Now it takes a lot because we're going to have 18 stitches in here. And that's what makes this little, like a almost flowery, wanting to born or something. Okay, so nothing to it. Go back in here and close it in. We're going to repeat this all the way around. I'll meet you at the end. And I'm going to cut my yarn because then I'm changing colors. I've cut my yarn. I keep saying yarn. This is thread. It's just a habit of mine. Don't mind me saying yarn. It's not yarn. It's thread. It's easier for me to say yarn than thread. I've gotten used to saying. So I'll just go through these loops here. And of course, I have to have a hard time because I have two, two threads on here. And pull one, well, if you're working with two, I'm going to make a knot like that. And then just going to go through some of the loops here just to make sure that it's all tackled in like that. I have to do this to mine because it's two threads, so I want to make sure that it's secure enough. So I'll just make two knots here. I'm done. Like this, we're sure it's not going to go anywhere. And I still have a little bit here from the one before that I try to hide. No biggie. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So you're supposed to have twelve of these big loops. Okay, so now we're going into the next color. So you turn once, you would lock in your color. You'd go on your first one here, and we're going to make 18 regular stitch. And I'm putting this uh, shiny purple, very light. We go up three. If I don't like it, I'm taking it down and put another color. So two, three. So we're going to do on every little loop. So you're supposed to end up with 18 stitches. Make sure of that. I'll meet you over here. So we've done our 18 stitches. We are just going to continue, no separations. We don't do here in the middle. We go into the first loop. So it's going to be repeatedly throughout this row the same way. 
So we're going to do 18 more. So basically we're covering up this big loop here. And we're going in the middle of these loops in order to have the effect of the white that goes around it from the beginning. So we're doing 18 of them. So this is what it looks like. We're going to do 18 and we don't do the middle one here. Okay, so I'll meet you at the end on the next row. All right. Yes, next row. Okay, so we finished making... Okay, everybody, so we pretty much finished all the round. We've locked in. Now, we're going to go inside of these loops here, and we're going to count one, two, three. So one, two, three. We're on our fourth. On the fifth one, we're going to go up three. So one, two, and three. Okay, so from where you locked in, you're going to count one, two, three on your fifth one. And actually, you got to grab both sides. We went in the middle so it doesn't show so much the stitch. So on the fifth one, we grab it from here. And we go up one, two, and three. And we're going to do four chain stitch. A group of four and one more. So we're going to have four of them here. Now we're going to count one, two, three, four, and five. And again, we're going to do one, two, three, four on your fifth one. We're going to do another group of four. So basically, inside of these big loops, you're going to have two groups of four. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'll pull my thread here. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. This is the big, the big loop. So we're going to have two groups of four inside of the big loop. Now... We're going to count, uh, let me just check my pattern here. Okay, now we're going to go from one side to the other. So we're going to count, uh, we're going to do one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to, don't tighten it up on your stitches here. We need them a little bit loose. One, two, three, four, five, six. On your seventh one, we are going to go and do the four groups again. So we can have the two groups of four inside of the big loop. I think you understand what I'm saying. So one, two, three, four, and five. Separation, don't tighten it. One, two, three, four, and five. So we have a five separation in between the groups and then a seven separation between one loop, one big loop to the other. So it's going to be like that. And then again, one, two, three, four, and five. Don't tighten the stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we do the two groups again of four with a five stitch separation between them and so one two three four and five one two three four on your fifth one we do the four group stitch again so really easy just have to concentrate a bit Okay, so basically, it's going to stay like this. Two is going to be basically on the center, well, the center of the of the big loop, and then there's going to be a seven separation here, in between them. Okay, and here's five. 
with five stitch separation. I'll meet you at the end. So we finished doing it and it ends up perfect with the seven with the seven separation here. We end up perfect on it. Now for some of you you're gonna look at it and you're gonna say, oh my god, but this looks weird and whatever. It's supposed to look weird. It's not supposed to look perfect because don't forget you got all the other stitches going in. And this is not supposed to be completely uh, round round. It's supposed to be like a, a, a top flower shape, you know, sort of like uh, creating growing. And then here, it's not supposed to be perfect right in the center of this loop. It's supposed to sort of uh, zigzag it, if you want to call it. Okay, so now we are going to do um, the other uh, row which is the uh, second row from this, okay? So uh, again, we are going to go into uh, the middle. So we're going to walk through it in the middle here. And we're going to go to the first one here, okay? And we're going to go one, two, three, four, um, three, sorry. I don't know why I'm counting four. I was counting the separations. Okay, so inside of the middle here, we're gonna do the four loops like that. Of course, my stitch is always a nightmare. Uh, uh, tight, you know, so I always have a hard time. So we're going to do four in the spaces and we're going to do one, two, three, four, and five. Don't tighten it too much. And you go back into this one. So this row and the next row will be the same thing. We're doing these four um, groups in between the spaces of your squares okay with five separation so do this row and then do the, exactly what we just did on the third row of this okay so we'll be one two three four rows right we're gonna have three of squares so just finish up this one now we're gonna do one two, three, four, and five. Separation, go in the middle here and create your four groups. When you finish, lock it in, walk through the center again, walk through the middle here, go in here and create four more uh, groups because we're supposed to have three to, to have these, uh, the, these motives in, okay? I'll meet you on the third one. Okay, you guys, so we finally finished doing the four rows, one, two, three, four. So that means it would be three rows of these four groups, okay? And we are here on the third one. I'm cutting my yarn and going back into the white. So we can cut the yarn here, the thread. Sorry, I keep saying yarn. Cut it here, and you can go through any of these little loops here because it doesn't matter. We have the white that's going to cover it, so it's not like, you know, we need to be extremely careful with it. As long as you go through the loops, the white one, once we start doing the stitches, is going to cover all gonna go on top so it will be secure enough like that just through any of these little loops like that got the excess off okay okay so I am going to um, before I do the white, 
show you like this before I do the white here I'm going to start doing this so I'm going it's going to be just stitches I need to do it because each pattern has you know their own size even if it's the same size as this one depending upon the stitch if I really tighten it or loosen it this part here could be looser or it could be tighter so I'm gonna um see which one I am going to do here and I believe I am going to use this this beautiful fuchsia one here again number four uh, because of the lighting let me see if I can change a bit the lighting in my window hold on I don't know if this lighting helped but I close one window in one side and open on the other side to see if the clarity of the of the light from from outside can can make you see it better but anyway it's really fush it's really pink i hear on the camera it looks like uh, a little bit different pink than what it is but it's it's really flashy bright gorgeous anyway so i am going to use this one because it matches my my centerpiece okay so I, all we're going to do is um, I'm going to make stitches and I am going to count how many there are to let you know because each, and this is what you have to do, you have to do all the stitch. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, anyway, and so on. I'm going to do my stitch. I'm going to stick it in here all around to see if I have the right size in order to do the stitch inside of these loops afterwards. So I'll let you know in a few minutes. So I did 180 stitches. And I'd rather do extra then too short because with the extra you could always take down and if you don't have enough well then it's a problem okay so there's 180 on there and what we're gonna do we're gonna go in just because we're gonna measure it first before we stitch you go under one over one make sure you don't miss any and under one and over one and then under one so it's gonna be like that just make sure I stretch it enough so we're under we go over and under and over and under and over and under all the way around to make sure we have the right measurement we don't want to be too much and we don't want to be too short so I'm just going to pull on here make sure we have it all going in And then over and under, over and under, and over and under. And you got to make sure that you're doing over and under. Make sure you look at it because I had made the mistake of going under two or over two at the same time. And that's not good. You really have to go over and under. So I can see that I have an ear somewhere here. So this would go over and this would have to go under. Okay, let me see where that I made my mistake. There it is. There's my mistake. Let me show you exactly what I mean when we make a mistake. 
because this will send up perfect. Look here. I put two under. No good. So you know that there's a mistake when when you don't match up at the end. So it has to go over. And then under and then over and then under. Now let's see if it's correct. It's supposed to be correct now. Just close it up a bit. Okay, it's correct. Now what you do is you pull your thread, your yarn, whatever you're using, right to the edge here like that because that's like the, the longest part so it's not too tight, so it doesn't crumple up. Pull it to the edge, and, and there it is. Now, there's 180 stitch. I can take out three or four because it's a little bit too long. Let's just pull that up here because it has to be well pulled to the top here, okay? so. I have 180, so I'm going to take out slowly. Or actually, let me see. So. Maybe not. Maybe I'm leaving the 180. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at 180 because I think it's perfect. Once it's all pulled back together, you can see that it matches right at the edge over here. So 180, the first one. Okay, so now we can take it out. Because we need to do the stitches on it. So 180. So you measure yours and you see that if you need a 180 or if you need more or if you need less. Okay? Because each stitch is different. Some people are very loose and some people are very tight. So just measure it and take it from there. It's not really going to make a, a difference on your pattern. It's just so it doesn't crumple up too much in here. Like, you know, you see this one's loose enough. Okay, so I have 180. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up three more. One, two and three and I'm gonna come down to my fourth one one two three and four so I'm gonna go in my four and I'm gonna do my stitch and now I have to do stitch on every single little loop in the middle get you closer so you can see like that so at the end of all of it you're supposed to have 180 stitches, but not necessarily that you need to count it. You just uh, have to make sure you don't lose uh, any loops. You have to have every single loop. So take your time with it, because if you're like me, like to rush things, then that's where we miss out the stitches. And we need every single one of them so it can fit perfectly inside of the pattern. Okay, so... Um, I'll meet you at the end and show you how we're going to put it on and assemble it together. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. Do all of them all the way to the end. Okay, everybody, so I've done all my stitches. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through see if it's fine if it's not too loose or too tight so as you see it pulls in more on this side so you know that you're going to do that side which is the right side up and we are going to go through the loops again over the loop and under the loop so this is under, this is over, this is under. Start pulling them already here because then I don't want to pull too much. 
so I don't undo my stitches. And then under and over. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing the under and over and I'll meet you right back. Okay, so just close it up here again. And just stretch it out a bit so you can stretch out a bit. Now, as you can see here, I have a little bit, it's a little bit too long for me, as I thought from the beginning, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So what do I do with this situation? So I had 80. So I'm going to take out one, two, three, four, five, six. So I took out six of them. And it's no problem taking it out. And I'm going to show you a little trick why. I think it's just going to be perfect this way. Okay, so I'm going to get you closer up so you know what I'm saying because you're going to say, oh my God, Maggie, but what about the edge? It's too long. So we have a little bit of a gap here on the edge. Not an issue at all. So what do you do? You come to where you started this edge and you take out a few stitches from the beginning, right? So... Take out a few, not a biggie, just go in slowly, and you're going to shorten it. So you're better off having it long than having it too short, because you could always undo, but you can't add, because once you've done the stitch, that's it. You can't, you can't add to it, right? I mean, you could add, but you have to adapt. You have to extend separately and that's not going to look cool so you just don't do here at the beginning i hope you can see what i'm doing so you undo it where we started the first stitch to do the chain and it's going to be just Perfect afterwards. And there it is. And there it is, my friends. So just Cut a bit of your yarn there. And now we have the perfect size. Now, just turn this around. There's two ways you can stitch this. You can stitch it by hand, or for the people that are more experienced and used to it, then you can just add in your stitch now. So, this is under over, and make sure I have this right. I don't want to be stitching something that is not right. Okay, so I'm just going to pull through a little bit here, because we want to make sure that we get this stitch underneath here. No, over. And under okay we should be good so now this one goes over and that's the under okay so now either you do it by needle or you just add it get my camera stay straight here or you just add it right onto here. So you would go to the first stitch right here. Add on, okay? 
Now I'm going to use my small wooden needle because my stitches are extremely tight. I'm going to go through here the loop. You see these little loops? And I'm just going to pull some yarn uh, thread through it. Of course, it doesn't help the needle smaller, so it just grabs everything. Okay, and just turn it, like bend it. Go through some of the loops here. And just lock it up like that. Doesn't matter if it's not really that perfect because this goes in the back in the bottom. So don't stress over it. Whoops. And there it, it is. So you pretty much added it in. Cut your yarn, your thread, whatever you're using. Lock it up. and go through your loops give it a knot so nothing comes apart like i said for some of you if you rather stitch it in than stitch it and use a big needle and uh, go through it and put it to assemble it together so nothing to it very simple Get it through some of the loops to make sure, give it a knot, so nothing comes apart, you know. Like that, and I'm gonna try to give it one more knot here, just to make sure. We don't want all this hard work to, to go to waste. through it small needle not funny eh Okay. Okay, so now obviously you would get the piece that you just um, stitched on would go underneath one of these, right? You're not gonna have it up front. So just fix it up, stretch it out. There's enough for it to be stretched out. And there it is. Now it's gonna look more tidy up once you add the other rows it's going to be more fixed you know like like the underneath one so now it's it looks like all crumpled up and this is how we do this so we're going to do two more of these this one's 180 so we're going to extend it now um i'm going to do 200 just to make sure because it's it's a larger piece around 10 won't be enough i don't believe but check yours and see how it is Okay, so I am going to do my middle, and I think the next one is 220 or 225, and I'm going to do my third one exactly the same way as this one. Do yours, and we'll meet at the end once it's all placed in. Okay, so I'm taking the measurements of the second one, 
and I had done 190 stitches. Now, it's a little bit too small still, as you can see here. So it's easier for me now to add than to be short, right? So I have 190 and I'm gonna add a few more, which like I mentioned before, it's probably 200. So 190 and straight out from here, I'm gonna add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So here I have my 200. So I'm gonna stretch it a bit again. I'm going to pull through to have it lined up, make sure it's the right size. And I did want to stop and check with you guys so you can see how I'm doing so you don't get mixed up and too complicated for you. It's very easy. Like I said from the beginning, what you need is concentration on it. So make sure that you pull it towards the outside like this, you know exactly the size that it's going to take because from the inside it's always shorter, right? So the outside is always larger, bigger, however you want to put it. So now I have 200 and I think 200 is just perfect for me. So. I'm going to leave it at 200. I think it's just fine because I have enough loosage on not too tight. If it's pulling, then you know you need to add more. It's not pulling. It's, it's, uh, it's loose a bit, which is fine. So 200 on the second one for me. Depending upon your stitch, do exactly as I'm doing. Don't tighten it too much. Leave it loose. Don't forget, after it's washed and everything, it shrinks up a bit. So we want to make sure that we don't uh, shrink up the material either. Okay? Okay, so I want to touch base with you again. On the third one, I have a hundred and, uh, sorry, 220. I've already measured it. I had only uh, 215 when I measured it. I needed five more. So I put on 220. Check yours, see if it's more or less what you need to add on to. Okay, everybody. So we pretty much did the three pieces, obviously. Put it this way so it does not confuse you. Like that. Okay, so we got the three pieces. Now normally we start the white. I'm gonna change it up a bit, just because I always like to give it something different to each client. I don't like to give the exact same thing because I want it to be unique for everybody individual that wants the same pattern. So I always add uh, a little something here and there. So instead of creating the white, here right away the first row I am going to use the mixed one here as you can see this is the mixed color and this is all stitches stitch over stitch so you just have to be careful not to stitch into these things you have to stitches into the purple here okay so we turn and you can pretty much start anywhere on your pattern there's no specific um, place to start so grab underneath just move it and where the four uh, groups are start by there any any of the four groups hide your yarn already or your thread and we're going to do stitch over stitch so not complicated. This row is very simple, like all the other rows. So stitch over stitch. And we are going to go 
um, in the middle of each uh, stitch here. Let me get you closer. So on the first one, and then so on. Make sure you go in the middle so you can have that effect. So we're doing stitch on each little loop and over the group of fours. So one, two, three, four. Let me just count mine here to make sure that is right. Okay, so basically your four on top of the four group. And in here, you're supposed to have five inside of the space. So five of them. And then again, on top of the groups, four on top of the group. So make sure you count it properly. So there's no stitches missing. So we did the four. And then now we're going to do inside of the loops here on the purple. We're going to do five stitches inside of these loops. So it's going to be repeatedly all the way around until the end. So we have three, four, and five. So it's supposed to go on top of your five separation stitch. And then we go into the first one of the group here. And then two, three, and then four. So it's going to, it's going to be stayed like that. Okay. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, everybody. So we come to the end. We lock it in. I'm going to change colors. I'm going to go into the white now. And it's pretty much that. So make sure that you've done yours over the purple, right? Inside of the purple and not on the on these little uh, patterns there. So just hide your thread, yarn, whatever you're using. I always say yarn for some reason. It's much simpler for me to say yarn than thread. I don't know. It's a habit already, I guess. Because when I when I think of thread, I think it's you know like the sewing thread, and it, it's just weird to me to be saying thread. I think it looks it sounds more yarn to to the actual word than thread. Thread, uh, I would imagine it's sewing threads, you know. So I guess that's why it confuses my mind. But don't mind me. Just saying. Okay, so we've tied up the end. Now look how gorgeous this looks. And even just, you know, that simple little, um, close it up so you can see, simple little difference of this mixture of this, um, is this fuchsia and white. Look at that. Just beautiful. Okay, so we're going into the white now, and we're going to start creating these, these uh, motives here. So now we're going to do, um, see where we're going to start. I guess we can start anywhere, but okay, we're going to start. Let me get you a close up. We're going to start on the stitch where we, the, the last one here on the, on the fourth group. So we're going to go up, start hiding the yarn to the thread. One, two, and three. Go into the next one. And we're going to do 10 regular stitches. 
Next one. I got to hide two, two threads at the same time here. So we have what? Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have ten. We're going to give one stitch separation. We're going to skip one. We're going into the next one. And this is going to be repeatedly the same thing throughout this row. 10 stitches, one separation, skip one stitch, and 10 stitches again. So not complicated again, very simple. No biggie. It's a very simple pattern. It's more complicated creating it than actually doing it. So uh, we skipped one here. Now we do 10. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. One stitch separation. Skip one, go to the next one. So continue doing yours. I'll continue doing mine. And I'll meet you at the end. And this is what it's going to look like. Hey everybody, I made a mistake. Sorry, it's not one separation, it's two separation. And I only realized that when I was already at the end and I was missing some. So I have to take it all down. So it's one separation here, but it's two separation on the bottom. Good Lord, don't you just love when that happens? I didn't uh, calculate it properly. Uh, I didn't look into my actual one that I did. So we're going to do uh, two separation on here. So I check. Yeah. Two separations, so 10, and then one stitch separation up top, and then two separation on the bottom. Good God. I have to take it all down, and I was already closing at the end. Two, four, six, eight. Then again, I go through so many times like that when I'm creating. I, I stitch, I take down, I stitch, I take down until I get it as I like it. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, so one separation and then one, two on your third one. Then we're going to do the ten stitch, okay? Sorry about that, people. No biggie. I only have to take everything down. Meet you at the end. Okay, people, since it's getting too dark already, I'm going to finish it tomorrow, but I am going to upload part one. And so we're going to continue after doing this one. We have one more row um, uh, for part two. So we'll continue on part two. Thank you.